Hi everyone, I'm outside the Warner film lot where tensions are high today as we count down to this year's Edgar ceremony. Little is known about the nominations this time around, but one thing is for sure, we're in for a night of real showbiz pizzazz. Last year, Richie Rich Guy cleaned up with a smash hit, Puff Puff and Two Little Pigs, winning Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, and Best Pig. This year, the box office has been rocked by the phenomenal success of the low-budget horror movie Slugs, starring none other than Terry Hatchling. But are we in for any shocks? Will Gwyn's softy pale toes burst into tears again? Heck, all I care about is the free buffet. <laughs> this is Mary Heartless for Entertainment Tomorrow, signing off. It is perfectly simple. Either you give me a 10-picture contract with unlimited budgets, or I melt down your silly Edgars and you won't get to have your little party. <laughs> I don't care what the mayor has to say, nor do I care what the public has to say. <laughs> yes, that is. It is blackmail. You don't. I'll call you whatever I like, cheese for brains. I have your Edgars. <laughs> Enough of this flim-flam, Thaddeus. I tire of it. You have eight hours to give in to my demands, or I make myself the world's most expensive set of golf clubs. <laughs> Goodbye, Thaddeus. Ah, Mixie, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> <laughs> Clumsy oaf! I seem to have misplaced my siblings. Have you seen them? What do they look like? Well, Wacko is insane and doesn't wear pants. Nah, doesn't ring any bells. And Dot is cute. Oh, yeah, I think I saw her over by the Wild West soundstage. You probably heard about the Edgar ceremony tonight. That's why it's kind of quiet around here. Well, what you don't know is that all the Edgars got stolen. And if they don't find them soon, there won't be no ceremony. Now, of course, that's confidential, like, so don't go blabbing to the press, okay? My lips are sealed. Well, hey there, newcomer. Welcome to Calamity Canyon. Sheriff Marion's the name, and it's my job to make sure there's always law and order around these parts. So, what do you got in this one-horse town? Besides one horse, I mean. Well, there's the saloon, of course. But you'll need proof of age for anything stronger than a sarsaparilla, sonny. Oh, I should warn you about old Ike <laughs> the Undertaker. Don't pay him no attention. He always chases new folks around, measuring them up. That's because new folks don't tend to last too long around here. <laughs> Before you go, Sonny, I should let you know there's a bounty out for the Moody Clan. The Moody Clan? 
Didn't they break up after their drummer died? They're a bunch of no-good, troublemaking varmints who should be locked up. That's who they are. Well, isn't locking up no-good, troublemaking varmints what a sheriff does best? I'm not getting any younger, Sonny. My legs ain't what they used to be, and my aim's been off ever since that bad batch of Kentucky Red Eye old Ike sold me. Shoulda known better than to trust an undertaker. So I put up a reward for any man that can round up all the Moody's for me. When all five of them are behind bars, I'll pay up. Well, if you pay up, I'll round up. Look out, Moody's. Deputy Yakko's are coming. Gee, Brain, what shall we do on this level? The same thing we do on every level, Pinky. Try to take over the world. How are we going to do that, Brain? We will use the world's strongest magnet to strip the shoes from every horse in the town and thereby monopolize the transport system. For he who controls the smithy controls the west. Use the movement stick to control the magnet and push the jump button to grab the shoes. Aim low, Pinky, and don't let the shoes drop until you are over the trap door. Well, my, my. Ain't you the rootinest, tootinest gunslinger around? At best, I could only sling a non-threatening blunt instrument, being a cartoon character and all. Looks like I'll have to look elsewhere for my new deputy, then. Here's your reward. You earned it. If you carry on down this road, you'll get to the train station. The last train to Dry Gulch leaves shortly. Eh, come to think of it, I saw a little girl who looked just like you being tied to the tracks over there not long ago. <laughs> Thought nothing of it, though. Plenty stranger things happen in this town, and every man to his own is what I say. Thanks. It's been real. Real creepy, that is. It's amazing what the special effects guys can pull off these days with just a crummy rolling oil painting, a dry ice machine, and a $50,000 computer. You can quit with the card thingies now. Hello, yeah. I'm like Big Chief Sitting Bison. You know, I've never seen a bison actually sitting. They must need one big chair. My name was like totally passed down from my ancestors, okay? Technically, I am Big Chief Sitting Bison the Sixth. Well, I'm Yakko the First. Nice to meet you, Chief. May I call you Chief? It sure would save time if I didn't have to say your entire name. Okay, you call me Chief, dude, and I'll call you he who looks like clown face hey. dog. Well, it does have a certain ring to it. Yeah. But it would take me a lot longer to sign my checks. Like so much for small talk, broham. Like Whoa. Big Chief Sitting yeah. Bison totally needs your help, dude. Yeah. Okay, but if it's about your clothes, yeah. I have no idea how to get those stains out. <laughs> no way, dude. It's not about the threadage. We need help performing yeah. our rain dance, or we like face a totally gnarly drought. Yeah. See, we're like one warrior down, okay? And we can't finish our dance until we fill the yeah, gap. Yeah. Oh, totally heinous. If you can find a grass skirt, your sister can totally <laughs> learn to limbo, and she can help us finish our dance. <laughs> yeah. That'd be tubular. Yeah. And where would I find that? Grass skirts are us. Ours is not to reason why. Ours is but to dance or die. Ooh. Like a thirst, bro. Hey. You make absolutely <laughs> no sense, Chief. Yeah. But I'll see if yeah. I can help you out. Hey, if you can cross hey. the Great Lake alive, you should, like, totally visit the Gold Prospector. He's <laughs> rad. He'll help you. Yeah. If I make it alive? <laughs> Thanks for the pep talk, Chief. <laughs> hey! Yeah! 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 Yeah!
This gift, yeah. and don't yeah. forget, be excellent to each yeah. other. Yeah, yeah. Andy Doody Traveler, what brings you to old Skookum Jim's mind? That person with the controller in their hand, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> well, stranger, you ain't gonna get far in these parts unless you know how to climb. You do know how to climb, don't you? Over the backs of all my friends to get to the top? Sure. Okay, Sonny. Then go climb the face of that rock there. Okay, I think this is where they bring in my stunt double, right? Could somebody get my agent on the phone? <laughs> you know as much about climbing as I know about alchemy. <laughs> well, here, let me share a little bit of prospector knowledge with you. To climb things, you need yourself a pair of these. Super Grip Suckers, available at all good minor 49er stores. This is my spare pair, so you can keep them. Now that you're the proud owner of a pair of Super Grip Suckers, you can use them to climb any different surfaces. You can't go climbing any old surface, though. And look for these special marks. They'll tell you that the surface is sound and won't crumble on you. Practice using your suckers by climbing up that wall. Don't be afraid. Just run into it and let it come natural like. Hey, over here, champ. You look like the kind of fella who knows how to handle a wild filly. You must know my sister. I'm offering a prize to any man who can tame this rowdy steed of mine. If you fancy your chances, then step right up. Whew. Uh, you're gonna need to dig your way in, champ. I lost my keys the last time the Bronco threw me. Well, I'll be dang. You managed it, champ. You tamed the unruly beast. Yeah, and I rode that horsey, too. I'd have never believed it unless I'd seen it with my own eyes. Here's your reward, champ. Chip Rain, what shall we do on this level? The same thing we do on every level, Pinky. Try to take over the world. What's your plan this time, Rain? I shall use subliminal mind control to take over the world. A subliminal message is a message perceived only by the subconscious human mind. I have recorded such a message. The message is... Citizens of the world, you are under my control. You will do whatever I say. If people hear this message enough times, they will succumb to my control, and we shall take over the world. The only problem is finding a high enough point to attach my transmitter. Pinky, are you pondering what I'm pondering? I think so, Brain, but I'm allergic to petroleum jelly. No, Pinky. We can attach the transmitter to the fallen water tower and use my microgyro brainocopter to lift the tower back onto its struts. Use the movement stick to control the copter and push the jump button to grab the fallen pieces. Don't hang on to them for too long. Like a telephone? Of course I didn't ring. As long as I've got your attention, I might as well let you know you've got yourself an infestation here, Humpy. I repeat, an infestation. An infestation? In case you hadn't noticed, this place is crawling with ghouls and ghosts and all kinds of creepy things. Yeah, this place has more geeks than a comic book convention. Do you realize how this will affect the resale value of your home? People want a two-car garage and a master suite, not hot and cold running ghouls. And what about those pesky poltergeists? You know, the ones that hide whatever it is you're looking for and you can't find it and you're about to lose your mind? And then just for fun, they give it back to you? What you need is a good extermination company. You're lucky we stopped by. We offer a discreet and ectoplasm-free exorcism service with a double-your-money-back guarantee if you're not happy with the results. But who wouldn't, wouldn't be happy with us? Well, I suppose the place could do with the spring cleaning. Here, take this photon accelerator pen. It will help get rid of the spooks. It seems to work better than a household vacuum cleaner. Just press the view mode button to enter targeting mode, and then <laughs> use the attack button to shoot. Let me know when you're finished. Mm -hmm. You're right. Oh, it's you. 
Come in. Uh, welcome to the house of Scratch and Stein. The master has been expecting you. He's upstairs in his lab, tending to his bride. He's using the brain of a funny little monkey boy to breathe life into his finest creation yet. Does this funny little monkey boy wear a red baseball cap? Why, yes, he does. What's up, brother, you old? Uh, you might want to think twice about experimenting with Wacko's brain. How his noodle works is a bigger mystery than the Bermuda Triangle. I suggest you go upstairs and speak to the master. This thing is scary. What is it, our paychecks? Looks like we'll have to solve this puzzle to you before getting any further. At last, my creation is complete. She is beautiful, and she is mine. From that fateful day, when stinking bits of slime first crawled from the sea and shouted to the cold stars, What's up? Our greatest dread has always been the knowledge of our own gullibility. Tonight, we shall ascend into the heavens. We shall make the earthquake. We shall command the thunders. And we shall poke fun at a really fine rain that talks you through. <laughs> it's alive. It's alive. It's alive! If science teaches us anything, it teaches us to accept our failures as well as our successes with quiet dignity and grace. Ah, did you do to me? <laughs> what did you do to me? What did you do to me? <laughs> I don't want to live. I do not want to live. <laughs> Someone needs a little vacay. Gee, Brain, what shall we do on this level? The same thing we do on every level, Pinky. Try to take over the world. How are we going to do that this time, Brain? We are going to use my new invention, the Digomatic. No! Oh, I dig the Digomatic, Brain. Oh, I really dig it, baby. Yeah! You have no idea how the Digomatic works, do you, Pinky? None whatsoever, Brain! We will use the Digomatic to destabilize the Earth's gravitational pull by drilling a hole from here to Kathmandu, thereby causing everyone on the planet to be flung into the lonely depths of space. Hey, God, Brain, that's brilliant! Oh, oh, wait, but what's stopping us from being flung into space when the Earth's gravy national thingy stops? Pinky, you are such a simpleton. We will duct tape ourselves to a nearby tree. Nerf. I love being taped to trees! Use the movement stick to control the digomatic. Watch out for unexploded acne bombs and lava sprites. Hootsman! Hootsman! Down, boy! Ach, oh, look what you've done to my new booties, you wee sassnach! What an adorable dog! What's his name? The Sporin, and my name's Jock. Hey, Jock, you might want to think about hitting a tanning booth. What's a ghost like you doing in a place like this? Do you really want to know? Yes! Well, a long time ago, I used to live in the big house. I was laird of the land and richer than anyone around. Was I happy? No, I was not! I was lonely! I had no friends! And no one to love me! <laughs> I guess you've never heard the expression, the clothes make the man. Then one day, I met a beautiful girl by the name of Clarissa. It was love at first sight. I had my friend Rabbi Barnes write me a poem so I could woo her. I love poetry! Hit me with some of your hip rhymes, hip cat! Oh, my love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh, my love is like a melody that's sweetly played in tune. As fair art thou, my bunny lass, so deep in love am I. And I will love thee still, my dear, till the seas run dry. I found the iambic pentameter somewhat lacking and the overall presentation devoid of emotion. Show him how it's done, sis. <clears throat> 
Roses are red, violets are blue. That's what they say, but it just isn't true. Roses are red and apples are too. But violets are violet. Violets aren't blue. An orange is orange, but Greenland's not green. A pinky's not pink, so what does it mean? To call something blue when it's not, we defile it. But uh, what the heck? It's hard to rhyme violet. I thank you. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. My poem worked. We both fell in love and were married not long after. But fate struck a cruel blow and my bunny was taken from me in a bizarre haggis stuffing accident. So what has this got to do with you, I hear you ask? I asked, not me. Did you, sis? I looked forward to the day I could finally be with my beautiful Clarissa. And when I ended up six foot under, what does this dumb beastie here do? He digs up my bones and buries them in the front garden. Man's best friend. He's no friend of mine. My Scottish soul has na seen eternal rest in hundreds of years. Please bring back my bones so I can rest in peace and join my pretty Clarissa. Jinx, Cribbins, and help me, Bob. You brought my bones back. Take this trinket as a reward. Brace yourself, Clary. I'm coming to get ya. Another body reunited with its bones. Always brings a tear to my eye. Oh, oh my. What am I gonna do? My life is, is essentially over. Who are you? My name is Marvin. I'm the head scriptwriter here. You write scripts on people's heads? That must be uncomfortable for them. What kind of pen do you use? No, no, I, I don't write scripts on people's heads. Head scriptwriter means I'm in charge of all the other scriptwriters, that's all. Oh, so they write on people's heads. What qualifications do you need to be a scriptwriting meerkat, then? I took a speed reading course and read War and Peace in 20 minutes. It involves Russia, apparently. Listen, my analyst said I need to confront my problems alone, but I admit it. I'm weak. Will you help me? I guess. You've got a deadline and you've run out of paper? No. You've got a deadline and you've run out of headspace? That's not it. You see, a production assistant put our latest script to the good feathers on the window ledge, and it flew away. And you want us to find it? There are six pages to find. One in each sound stage. It'd help reduce my stress levels immensely, and I'd be willing to trade you for an Edgar. Ah, more shiny things. Hi there. Who are you? I'm Duffy Fish, co-star of the classic aquatic adventure series, The Manta from Atlanta. Oh, we're big fans. I found something down here you guys might find useful. A snorkel. It can help you swim underwater for brief periods. Press your attack button when you're in the water, and you'll dive underneath. When you're under the water, press your jump button or your attack button to swim. Thanks, Duff. May I call you Duff? Anything for my fans. Yeah, 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 enough chit-chat. Is there anything else you can tell us about this place? Well, I know that if you swim down through the tunnel under this pond, it brings you out inside the wishing well. From there, you can get to the castle or across the bridge to the land of evil. That's all I know. I've been busy filming with Manny, you see. We have a new feature film coming out this fall. It's called Codfellas, and I'm so excited about it. Codfellas? I get it. It's like good feathers, but with a funny fishy take. You're so clever. See ya. See ya? Like, see? The sea where you live? Ha! No, I meant goodbye. Oh. That's not funny. Don't forget. Swim down through the tunnel underneath me. Ouch! Oh! You little... Well, what do you know? It's Bo Peep and her electric sheep. Hello, Bo Peep! Oh, hello, boys. Would you be a couple of sweeties and help me with my sheep? What seems to be the problem, Miss Peep? Well, you see... My sheep are long overdue for a haircut. They've gotten so shaggy, they've become statically charged. Every time I go near them to herd them into the shearing machine, they electrocute me. Excuse me, Bo, but if we help you, won't we get a shock too? Hmm, probably. But I'll make it worth your while. Hubba hubba. It's hard to believe they managed to have all this far. Bravo, you've shaved my shaggy sheep. Oh, joy! No more static shocks and lice outbreaks! And now it's just a matter of our, ahem, <laughs> reward. Of course! I nearly forgot! Here you are, you helpful little men. <sighs> I say, look here, you three! My family are hungry! 
the grass on this side of the river is no good. How can my son grow up to be big and healthy like me on such slim pickings? The grass on the other side is much greener, but, but the only reason I can't get them across is because of the large troll living under the bridge. He's a bounder. I've tried to defeat him, but a lifetime of beating up trolls has taken its toll on me. Now, I have a plan. If we charge one at a time over the bridge, the troll is sure to pop his head up to see what the commotion is. When he appears, you hit him! Bang! Right in the old boat race. When you get all three of us safely to the other side, I can award you one of these shiny statues you and your friends seem so key on. Chin Chin! I'm defeated! I do not believe it! I'm off! There'll be other bridges! Other fat, juicy goats to feast on! <laughs> Oh, well done! Oh, you saw showed him! <laughs> the Empire will be proud! I don't think he'll be bothering us again! You played your part well. As promised, here is your shiny statue. Truth be known, if you just asked for it, I would have given it to you anyway! <laughs> what use is a gold statue to a goat? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> Hello, fuzzy heads. I wonder if you can help me. I wonder if I could ever work for NASA. I wonder if I could possibly get cuter. I wonder if they'll ever invent chocolate teapots. Well, I need some petrified wood chopped outside. Why is it petrified? Wouldn't you be if you saw her every day? If you chop five timbers for me, I will give you a little something in return. Ah, oh, the fuzzy heads are back. Well, did you give me my wood? Sure did, lady. Where do you want it? Over there, under the pot, will be fine, Sonny. So, about our fee, old hag. Watch it, kiddo. I may be a hag, but I'm not old. Ooh, hello. Did someone say soup? I am starving. Hi, starving. I'm Dot. And these are my brothers, Wacko and Yakko. Come on out! Scram! Scat! Scoot! And skedaddle! No, don't go. I think I'm in a spot of hot water. Oh my, please help me. I'm too fruity to make a good soup. I'm not gonna touch that line. Stay away from my dinner, you pesky kids! We prefer the term vertically impaired pre-adults. What do you say, Sibs? Should we help him out? We'll have to kick some stinky witch behind first. Then we can all have soup. Let's get us! If I'm not mistaken, this is where we find three magic beans and plant them to grow a big beanstalk. How'd you know that? He read the script, silly. Must. Climb. Big. Weed. See what happens when you water and fertilize regularly, kids? Is there a nuclear plant nearby? Oh, help is here! I was out in the glade eating my curds and whey when down came a spider and sat down beside me and frightened me away. I ran and ran until I could run no more. I found myself in this spooky forest lost and cold in the dark. I can hear the spiders scratching away in the dark. I hate them. Please help me get out of here. Thank you, oh, thank you, my heroes. I'm forever indebted to you. Here, take this as a token of my appreciation. It is no use to me. Gee, Brain, what shall we do on this level? The same thing we do on every level, Pinky. Try to take over the world. <sighs> Are you tired of that yet, Brain? Certainly not, Pinky. And this time there is no time to lose. My plan is to create a deadly and destructive beam by focusing the sun's rays through a giant magnifying glass. We will build this magnifying glass by grinding down my collection of marbles and arranging them to fashion a powerful magnifying lens. However, in five minutes a solar eclipse will occur and our plan will be foiled. We must act quickly, Pinky. What? Oh, sorry, Brain. I was attending a country western concert in my head. <laughs> Did you say something? 
Rotate the movement stick to move the conveyor belt. Use the attack button to grind the marble and the jump button to deliver it into the receptacle. Avoid grinding the bombs. Hello! 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 Yodle! Knock, knock! Who's there? Tank! Tank who? You're welcome! Either someone had some nasty garlic for lunch or we are in big trouble. Well, thank goodness that's over. It was dragging on. Top of the morning to ya. But it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Who is it? You'll have to forgive me. I've gone and locked myself out of my house and I can't find my door key. You live in a mine? Why yes, it's not at all bad. Apart from the spiders and the bats, it's fine. And anyway, me monkey workforce keeps the place spick and span for me, and all for a handful of peanuts. You've probably got a golden Edgar locked in there as well, haven't you? Not that this game is getting predictable or anything. To be sure I have. You're the smart one, aren't you? And I'm the cute one. And I'm the psychologically unhinged one. Oh, haven't you all got the gift of the gab now? Well, if you can find me key, then we can get inside, and I can get you your Edgar. What does this key look like? Well, it's shaped like a shamrock, and comes in three pieces. Try looking in the monkey temple. The monkeys were complaining about the tiny rays I gave them the other day, so I wouldn't put it past them to have pinched me key. And if you swim down to the bottom of the lake there, you can find your way to a beautiful lagoon. Hello there. Me, king of the primates, she wife. We swingers. You sure are crazy looking dudes. You'll want to get up into my treehouse, won't you? Well, if you can find my pesky monkey Cheeky and bring him back, I'll let you up. Well done. Me just can't control the impudent little primate. Anyway, a deal's a deal. Feel free to take a look around my palatial pad under the treetops. Oh, you found it, sure you have. Here we go, then. I'll unlock the door and we can go inside. Wipe your feet before you come in. Oh, wait a minute now, I nearly forgot. All the lights are off, so it's pitch black in there. Now go inside and find the light switch. Your Edgar reward is in the mine, somewhere. <laughs> Here, use these night vision goggles my brother-in-law Seamus gave me for St. Paddy's Day. Gibrain, what shall we do on this level? The same thing we do on every level, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Hairbrain? I have just finished the construction of my new invention, the Time Bomb. Unlike ordinary bombs, this device does not contain any explosives. That would be dangerous. Instead, the device accelerates particles up to subatomic speeds and creates a rip in the space-time continuum, thus dragging anything in close proximity back through time. Use the movement stick to alter the digits. Press the attack button on the indicator lights to test the code. A red light indicates an incorrect digit. An amber light indicates a correct digit in an incorrect position. A green light indicates a correct digit. Oh, I'm sorry, Brain, but this new thingy of yours is far too dangerous. It has to go! Scolded by a moron, my life has reached its nadir. Hold it, Sibs, I think we found something. Looks like an effigy. That doesn't look like an F or a G. An effigy. You know, a likeness of someone. Oh, sure, an effigy. They've really caught your likeness, sis. Hey, what do you think? Does it look like me? Well, that takes 
care of that, I guess. I had a smashing time. Destroying a statue of one's own likeness. Freud would have a field day. Are you sure this won't make us crazy? Nope, we're already crazy. Boingy, boingy, boingy. Welcome, strange people. You're not from around here, are you? Well, you have come to a truly magnificent place. Up this grand staircase lies the palace of Queen Kino. You really should drop in on her, she's always looking for help. Watch out that you don't get pulled over on the way up. To the right is the bazaar. It's not open right now. If you come back later, it will be open for business. Later, in town, is the great chariot race. You'll have to be quick to get in there. It's nearly sold out already. You might have to look for an alternate way in. Hello, Cleo! Look at my skin. Oh, it's horrible. My hair is all limp, and I've got bags forming under my eyes. I'm hideous. Hello, Cleo! My nails are brittle. My cellulite is beginning to show, and I can count my chin. Huh? Having a bad hair day, sister? Well, worry no more, because Dot Warner's Mobile Beauty and Spa Services are at your disposal. We can give you hydration. We can give you exfoliation. We can give you punctuation. I've got a couple of spare semicolons around here someplace. And all services are performed by a professional cosmetologist. That's a fancy word for Barber. I was trained at the Wheel Train Anyone Discount Beauty Academy. All I need is donkey's milk. Donkey's milk? Yes, donkey's milk. Where are you gonna get that? From my private herd. I have three donkeys that are grazing around the palace. If you can herd them into each of the milking machines, then I can take a long overdue bath. Oh, and you'll need to turn the taps on. They're on the roof of the palace. I'm having the walls cleaned of graffiti, so excuse the scaffolding. Coming! <laughs> Easy, fella. You strain like that, you're likely to throw something out. And it might not come back. But with the rich diet these people have, you'd think they'd have no trouble at all. Didn't you ever hear the poem about beans, beans, the musical fruit, the more you eat, the more you... Instead of making fun of my situation, how about picking some dates for me from the gardens? Well, how many do you think you'll need? I always like to have more dates than I really need. Now, more than ever, just a few tins should do the trick. About eight. Oh, my skin feels so much better. I can feel myself getting younger with every stroke of the bath mitten. Take that trinket over there as a sign of my gratitude. And as a special thank you, I had my high priest open my sunlight temple on the roof. Feel free to visit it anytime. Oh, I can feel the fiber working already. Blessed relief is but a moment away. I think it would be polite of us to leave now. Since when did we ever do the polite thing? Hey, I found the statue in here. You could have it as a thank you. Shiny thing! This is my dream room! Look at all the crystals! Cleo was a woman after Dot's own heart. It's a bit stuffy in here. I'll open a window. Wow! Nice, but not quite right. You're right, brother. The room does feel a little chaotic. My feng shui training tells me that the beams need to line up with those gems on the wall over there. Oh, and you need to hang a red flute on a south-facing doorway. The hieroglyphs on the wall say we can make the crystals turn by pressing the action button. Hey, I just read them. I don't necessarily understand them. Help me get out of this f***ing cell, would you? Those Romans have enslaved me in my three flats. We're due to be fed to the f***ing lions tomorrow. Please help me escape and the f***ing Romans. Oh my, listen to Sparty cuss. Whoa, talk about your noise pollution. We should free him before the air turns blue. Or the bleep machine breaks. Fun. 
two, three. No, I can't. One, two, three. Nope. Something is not right. It's just not right. Okay, this time. One, two, three, and... Oh, it's no good. <laughs> I'm too scared. What you doing, mister? Ah! Don't sneak up on the people like that. You see the big stadium down there, yeah? Well, I wanted to watch today's big chariot race. My hero chariot here, Ben Hib, is racing, but I couldn't afford a ticket. So, I invented these wings so that I may take flight and gracefully glide down into the stadium and get myself a good seat for free, yeah? So if your wings are ready, why haven't you flown the coop? I have an irrational fear of heights. That would be autophobia. And I have an irrational fear of flying. That would be aviophobia. And I have a very healthy fear of getting badly hurt and spending time in the hospital. That would be traumatophobia and socomophobia. I have pogonophobia. An irrational fear of beards. What about Parascovetica triophobia? A fear of Friday the 13th. This is fun. What about... Enough! Enough! I have phobophobia! Ooh, my favorite. A fear of phobias. If I've been paying attention, it sounds like you won't be needing those wings. Why don't we take them off your hands for you? Nine! I will get over my fears. Eventually. But I will teach you how to make your own wings. Before you can fashion your wings, you need some sticks, some glue, and the blueprints. These can all be found in the bazaar. Look for the short and tall hagglers. You'll also need five feathers. Shoot the vultures and they will drop what you need. Juicy in the sky with ah, I. So you've figured out the Acme Dimension Gate. Good. High Command will be pleased. Finally, there are signs of intelligent life on your planet. Well, intelligent is a relative term, especially if you're referring to my relatives. <laughs> I've been monitoring this backwater planet now for centuries, just waiting for one of your inhabitants to show signs of intelligence. Yeah, is that a toupee or is a squirrel snuggled on your head? You must use your combined talents to perform great things. Can you amalgamate your toupee? I've told you all that I can. The rest is up to you. Go, now, before the gate closes. It is time to rise up and smash the f***ing Romans. I cannot thank you enough. Well, most people we've met so far seem to insist on giving us a golden statue. We have no idea what they're for, but they're shiny. We like shiny. I too have a shiny statue for you. Thank you again and goodbye. Ow! The darn smash work! One, two, three... Ah, boy! Okay. This time, definitely no messing around. Just run and jump and fly like a birdie. Oh, I am a birdie. <laughs> I am a big chicken birdie. Oh, hello there, little, um, little, uh, what are you anyway? Forget about our mysterious origins. We could tell you, but we'd have to kill you. We've got all the bits and pieces you asked for. Now, can we please build some wings and get flying already? Do we need passports? I ate mine. Do you have a frequent flyer plan? Fine. Oh, okay. Well, you just need to follow the blueprints. <laughs> it took me a few weeks to... Oh. I feel the need. The need for speed. Wow, box seats? When does the race start? Haven't you learned anything from watching all those chariot racing movies? When the trumpet blowers blow their trumpets, of course. What are these instructions for? Ah, that'll be the instruction manual for the chariot. What does it say? Press the jump button to accelerate. Use the movement stick to steer. Press the action button for a speed boost. Well, like most things you say, that makes absolutely no sense to me. Read it again. Press the jump button to accelerate. Use the movement stick to steer. Press the action button for a speed boost. Where are the brakes? Brakes? What brakes? Uh-oh! Hold tight, brothers! Thank you! Thank you! You're too kind. Look! I want a kettle!
You found them. Words cannot describe my relief at this moment. I feel totally liberated. Here, take this Edgar as thanks. And now I must bid you adieu. The script needs proofreading and editing before being handed off to the storyboard artist. And then, and then there's the matter of payment. I mean, you can't expect these guys to work for nothing. Not to mention... Those pesky little fuzzy heads will never find them all. and all the Edgars. The puppy children had them all the time. Well done, Ralph. Now lock them back in the tower where they belong and we can put all this behind us. Now, if you'll excuse me, the show must go on. Would you like to hear our song? Ten shiny statues sitting on the wall. Wait a minute, brother. That's the radio edit. Which is singing the extended 12-inch version. He might be in here a while. A million shiny statues sitting on a wall A million shiny statues sitting on a wall And if one shiny statue should accidentally fall There'd be 999,999 shiny statues sitting on the wall No! 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 <laughs> 